Good morning. Morning, Daniel. Okay. Uh, so you made it to this fight week this time with Charles. Like, is there? I know there's still a few days, but do you kind of sigh some relief here. Don't start. Yes, there is definitely uh, no. As far as the fight happening, no. At this point, I, I believe the fight's going to happen for sure. Uh, I've seen Charles. You know, we uh, we. I think I saw him on Monday. They're they're here. They're ready to go. Have you been following his social media at all? It seems like he's already like in the sauna a lot, doing the in room sauna stuff. Like, do you think he's having a tough cut? Maybe someone sent me that. See, the the thing with sauna is you don't know because some people enjoy doing the sauna. Uh, you know, I got one in my house about a no, it was uh, during COVID time, so it's been a while. My 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 track of time is not good. I in the beginning I was doing a lot of sauna, so I just enjoyed jumping jumping in there, and I would. Um, but I would do it just for fun. So maybe it's one of those things, instead of working out, he wants a sauna instead. I don't know, I, I, but I'm just assuming he's gonna make the weight. What does your weight cut process look like over the next 48 hours or so? Uh, water load for today, and uh, hoping to wake up about, you know, somewhere around like 10, 10 to 12 pounds over, and, and then just get the rest done tomorrow. And uh, you've done you know, a lot of media leading up to this fight, and it seems like you've been very confident in your ability to go with Charles on the ground. Um, is that something like you're embracing, or is that just if it happens and the fight goes there, you'll be very confident? I mean, I hope I'm confident in, in, in that. That's that's supposed to be my base. That's supposed to be where I started from. I'm a, I'm a jiu-jitsu uh, athlete. I, that's where I started. Uh, my coaches are some of the best in the world, and, and so if I don't have the confidence to go on the ground with him, you know, I, then I shouldn't have the confidence in anything I do. Where do you think he's at right now? Because he obviously lost the belt last time out, and he says like he won't even watch that fight, and just like that's not even him. Do you think that's a mistake, maybe not you know, recognizing his, his flaws and how to build off that performance? I, I don't know. Everybody's different when it comes to stuff like that. I just... I. I'm assuming the best Charles, the, 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 the most aggressive, the even defensively better than before. I w the way I look at, uh, at it is I want to prepare for the guy uh, at his best and how would he be his best. And I, I kind of analyze what would I add to Charles' game to make him even more dangerous. So I'll add those things to his game and I'll prepare for that kind of person. Um, to you, it seems pretty clear the stakes, right? You went here and you're fighting Islam in October in Abu Dhabi. That's that, that is correct. Um, I, I spoke with Hunter when we rebooked this fight, and that's what they said. I would be number one contender. And when you just look ahead, obviously don't want to look past Charles, but like, what do you think of Islam? What do you think you can do with him that other people haven't been able to accomplish so far? I, I just think there's nothing really he does that I can't do better. You know, I know people... Will will we'll disagree, but you know they they used to say wrestling. I can't wrestle with these guys. You know, last fight I showed it. They, now we're talking about jujitsu. Uh, next is going to be striking. It's like, you know, I, I can do it all, and um, that's that's really what I want to show the world. I can do it all, and so as far as Makachev goes, I don't see anything that he does that I can't do better. Thank you. Uh, obviously, leading into this fight, a lot of the narrative. Two high level grapplers uh, fighting each other. And historically in the UFC, when you get two wrestlers and two jiu jitsu guys, it kind of can turn to a striking matchup, maybe. So, how would you rate your striking compared to Charles? I think this is one of the few times where I would say defensively I'm, I'm better. Typically, I don't, that's not something I say. <laughs> Uh, but I would say, uh, striking-wise, defensively I'm better, and then offensively I think I have just as much power. I would say he has a little bit more variation in his strikes, but uh, that doesn't change the fact that, you know, it, it's who lands, it's not about what you throw. And I, I saw an interview where you said, like, if it was just a regular grappling match, you'd probably win 9 out of 10 times, that's what you believe. So, what do you, when you're watching Charles' past fights, he obviously has the most submission wins in the UFC. What do you think his opponents are doing wrong in there, knowing that... You, you know what he's looking for, but there's still has to coming to it. One, they're terrified of his grappling. I think that that's the biggest one. And two, it's uh, he's very good at offense when it comes to grappling. Like he'll jump on your neck, he'll jump on your arm, he'll jump on the leg. 
But once you can get past that is where he starts to hit that wall. So I, I think I'm the kind of guy who would either not even allow him to get there or I can get past it if he does jump on a neck or an arm. And, and so the, then it comes the next layer. And I think I have more layers than him. And I think that's what makes me uh, the better grappler. Uh, one final one for me. When you guys were both in Newark and then got moved here, Gilbert and Bilal, they took your spot as a co-main. It was a five-round fight. Was there any talks of making this a five-round fight, a co-main event? It was never mentioned to me. I mean, you you tell me three rounds, I fight three rounds. You tell me five rounds, I fight five rounds. Fighting is is like... I always tell people, those 15 minutes I have in that octagon are my freedom. Like, I have 15 minutes of freedom to do what God has given me, you know? The talents that God has given me, I get to use them, and I get to do it freely. So, 15 minutes or 25 minutes, it's all the same. Do you feel like, almost, you don't even need those next two rounds, because the way Charles fights, it's either, he's in there for a couple of rounds, it's either win or losing, right? Yeah, I mean, typically it seems that way with him. Uh, it's, it's a, if it's a five-round fight... It never goes five rounds. I, I, I don't know how many decisions he's been to in general. He's not really a guy... I, I remember his fight with Frankie a long time ago. He went to a decision. But he's not really a guy who goes to decisions. Um, lately, I've been in more decisions than I would like. But at the same time, I'm, I'm fighting a higher level of competition. You mentioned your confidence going into an Islam fight. You know, before his last fight with Alex Volkanovski, he had this sort of aura of invincibility. Do you feel that Volkanovski's performance against him sort of hurt that aura? Or were you confident anyway? I was pretty confident, but he just, you know, he just re reaffirmed what I believed. I, I knew there were things I could take advantage of, uh, similar to Volkanovski, but I think even better because, um, you know, just I have a little bit more jiu-jitsu than Volkanovski and, and wrestling as well. I, I just think I could do better. So, I, yeah, it reaffirmed what I believe, and I think when the time comes, uh, it'll be my fight. Would you be interested in fighting Volkanovski again if he, if he wants to move up to 155? Should you be the champion? Volkanovski is a pound for pound king, right? To, to say no to him would be, wouldn't really make sense to me. I get, get an opportunity to fight so, such a great fight. The only thing is, I want to defend my belt at least against another lightweight first because I don't want the division to get held back. That if, if I'm the champion and I have the opportunity between Volkanovski or a contender, I go contender, and then we talk about Volkanovski. So with that said, does it, for you in your mind, not to look too far in the future here, right? But we got Gaethje and Poirier, and then potentially Chandler and Connor. Out of those two, which name out of those four would you like to defend your title against? Uh, man, like I said, Lord willing, I, <laughs> I win this fight, and then, you know, I don't know what tomorrow brings, and then if things go well with Makachev and everything. Um, I believe... It's going to be Justin Gagey. He seems a little bit hungrier, but at the same time, it's hard to say with Dustin Poirier, right? I said this before. Dustin Poirier, what makes him special is when he starts to get tired, his, his details improve in, in the small movements. So he, he's a very difficult guy to fight in five rounds. I know this fight's five rounds. Um, it is an elevation, so I think that's also another advantage for Justin. I, I, I'm still leaning towards Justin, but it's, it's, it's a hard one. As far as who I would prefer be between the BMF or, or Connor or Chandler, I, I would definitely say uh, the, the B BMF. I think these guys are more active. Uh, I think if Connor wins and he beats Chandler, I know the UFC will give him a title shot, but I don't know if he's really deserving of it. Um, so I, I think the BMF title makes more sense. Benil over here. Talked to a lot of fighters about this fight, and the common consensus is, Benil, we need to see him get that title shot. You have so much support going into this fight from your fellow fighters. What does that mean to you? It seems like across the board, everyone just really wants to see you get that opportunity. You know, having my peers just respect and, and, and show so much respect and, and, and say the things they say, it, it is awesome. Uh, Obviously, if, if, you, uh, if you care about anybody's opinion, it should be your, your peers in, in, in your work, right? So that, that's great. It's, it's, the whole thing's been kind of strange, to be honest with you. I have uh, fellow athletes telling me I'm, I should be fighting for the title. I have a lot of media telling me I should be fighting for the title. And then even the fans, I thought they were going to be, you know, it was going to take me forever. Like, I'd have to defend my belt before they say, okay, this guy's good. Uh, but... Even the fans seem to think so. So it, it seems to be the, the trifecta. It's just the UFC hasn't seen it my way yet. 
What was your reaction when Islam did end up fighting Volkanovsky and instead of you, like, were you annoyed? Like, like, how did you keep your composure? Because I'm sure a lot of people in that situation would be really upset. You know, if it wasn't Volkanovsky, if it was somebody else, I would be very upset. Because Volkanovsky is the pound for pound king. He's defended his belt multiple times. So I understand that he has the, he has the privilege to do this if he wants. So, and, and, and he did. It wasn't the best timing for me, but whatever. He wanted to do it. Great. Uh, that's the fight that happened. And uh, that's kind of what helped me uh, stay, stay, on, uh, stay on track. Obviously, I was still frustrated because imagine I should have fought for the title, let's say March or something or, or, or February. That would have been incredible. But again, I, I recognize who Volkanovski is. I, I recognize how the business works. I put myself in everybody's shoes, helps me to uh, reset, refocus. And uh, I, I'm here, you know, I'm here for Charles. This is what I'm here for. And just last thing uh, on that fight, um, did you score that fight for Islam after watching it? It was very close. Some people felt like it could have gone the other way. So I had Makachev winning either 48 or, or 49, but here's the thing. If it's 48 and then the last round could be a 10-8, you could, you could potentially call it a draw, right? If it was a 48 card. I, I thought Makachev won overall, but uh, that last round was very interesting. And just one more, sorry. Um, Charles takes a lot of damage in his fights. How much do you think that will play a factor in the matchup just with the fact that you don't get hit a ton in, in your matchups? So the way... I don't want to think of it like that. Because if I think of it like that, here's the, here's the thing. You think to yourself, oh, this guy breaks. And then when you're in that octagon and he's not breaking, all of a sudden you, you start to question yourself. Or you say, oh, this guy's taking a lot of damage. And all of a sudden you start to dish out this damage and he's not going anywhere. It starts to mess with you. The way I look at it right now, the way I look at Charles is he's young, he's hungry, he's better than he's ever been, uh, striking in terms of offense, defense, grappling in terms of offense, defense, he's the best he's ever been, and uh, he wants to kill me. So it's kill or die. I either kill him or I, or I die. That's, that's the way I look at it. I don't think about his past fights. I don't think about what's going to happen next. I'm thinking about Charles Saturday and what I need to do to beat him. Anyways, over here, just uh, on, your, on your left there. Oh, here we go. Sorry, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was like... Um, uh, just touching on that, I mean, Charles does take damage, and often you'll see him be on the brink of defeat, and then he rallies back. How does that factor into your game plan? Do you maybe take a step back? Uh, walk through that. Uh, well, typically when he comes back from these defeats is because people are afraid of his grappling. I am not afraid of the grappling. I recognize how good it is and I, I understand that there's danger in it, but I am not afraid of his grappling. So if something in, in that sort of situation does take place, I just, I go to the ground and, and I, I go, I lose my mind basically when I say stuff like that happens. I remember the fight with Diego Ferreira and I, I second fight, I heard him with a knee uh, and he basically pulled guard and I could hear everybody saying like, just get up and, and you know, uh, just get up and punch him and, and you know finish the fight striking but I thought to myself why would I get up I worked hard for this position why would I give up this position and, and so uh, I went as hard as I could for the for, for the rest of that round and uh, it wasn't it was a decision it, uh, it wasn't the finish that I wanted but it, it, you know I, I understand the difference if I had been disciplined it would have been great but I'm not afraid of people's games I'm not afraid of your judo I'm not afraid of your wrestling I'm not afraid of your jiu-jitsu or your striking Whatever I need to do to win, I'll do that. And the two of you are really both kind of action fighters. What are you expecting from his pace? And do you think he can match your pace? I think he can definitely match the pace. I just don't know if it'll last is, is the way I look at it. If we both come out and we keep, keep this high pace and uh, the fight goes the way, you know, what, what most people are thinking, I think I'm more durable. So I, I just think... I'm going to be able to outwork him eventually and uh, just finish him like that. Thanks. Neil, here to your left. Just uh, go, going into this eight wins, and I believe Charles had eight wins when he went into his first title fight with uh, Chandler. I mean, do you look at him at all as kind of a, a blueprint or motivation going, hey, he went that long road, it is possible? For me, I don't think there is a blueprint because uh, Take Charles, for example, he had one top five fight, and that allowed him to fight for the belt, right? Uh, he fought Tony Ferguson, and, and he was able to get the title shot. Well, um, 
Makachev, he fought, uh, I think maybe he had one top 10 fight. I'm, I'm not sure, sure if he even had any uh, at that time. And he ended up fighting for the belt. So my blueprint is different than everybody else's. I have top five wins. I have uh, top 10 wins. I have multiple top 10 wins. And so my blueprint's different. Uh, you know, my the, the, the work I put in is different. And I don't mind that it's different. I actually appreciate it more and I respect it. Uh, I, I, you know, I have, uh, I have respect for those guys and I just appreciate my work more. I know you said you've been told it's uh, for the title. Is there any doubt in the back of your mind that something crazy happens? I know you said if it's not a title fight, you're right. Do you think that's a possibility? Um, you know, UFC never gives me their word. They're, they're very honest with me. I'm, 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 you know, I call them and when we speak, it's, it's very clear. Whatever they want with me, it's very clear. We don't play games. So this is the first time they've ever said, hey, yeah, you, the, you're number one contender if you win this fight. So I, I, I just take it at their word. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll figure out the rest afterwards. But right now, take Charles out. And if, if they say something different, we'll talk, we'll talk about it then. Thanks very much. Benilo right here. Um, you recently said that in your last loss way back in 2018, Alexander Hernandez, that uh, at the time you were telling yourself, my career is dead, uh, I'm on the verge of retiring, this is going to be my one last push, and lo and behold, here we are eight straight wins later. Is retirement at all on your mind? Not now, but or is that something you've passed, you've proved to yourself that you deserve to be here? You know, the reason retirement was on my mind was because... I wasn't able to train the way I should, and I wasn't able to. I wasn't able to basically be a fighter. So I, I thought to myself, if that's the case, maybe it's over for me. I spent a lot of time in prayer, and I spent time in recovery, and, and and things you know pick back up. So at this moment, I don't really have a timeline for recovery. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry for retirement. My my thing is. When the time comes, I, I believe God will, will just tell me, hey, you're, you're done, sit out. And hopefully, I'll be obedient enough to say yes. And just one more for me. Um, around that same time, Charles Oliveira, I think at the end of 2017, was probably, you know, had his worst record in the UFC. I think it was like one and three, something in that range. And again, 2018, the start of an 11-fight win streak for him. Is there sort of an extra level of respect that you both sort of faced that kind of adversity and were able to turn things around at relatively the same trajectory. Man, from going, coming in, young fighter Charles Oliveira, and people like touting him, saying he's the next big thing, then he goes on and has kind of like a 500 record, uh, moves between 55 and 45, and he's just struggling to make weight sometimes. To go from that into that last run he had, you know, there's a reason why he, he's uh, so, he, I mean, he's a legend. He, that's the best way to put it. But look at him in Brazil. They, they, they idolize him. And uh, I understand, I, I, I'm not a big, big on idolizing anybody, but uh, I understand why. I understand why he's so loved in Brazil and why he's so respected. And um, I, again, I have a ton of respect for him. I just believe this is just my weekend. That's all. Thank you. Daniel, still over here. Um, first off, welcome to Vancouver. Your, your impressions of the city, two-part question, and at this stage in your career, the journey that you're on, how important is it for you to share it with your family? Does it help, maybe not as a distraction, but just enrich the experience no matter what city you go in? So, Vancouver, I gotta tell you guys, it is beautiful here. I didn't realize how amazing this place was, because you know, it's, it's, a, it's a short flight, two hours. So we, people have told me to come here, vacation, and bring the family, you'll love it. And I, I'm typically so busy, I, I, I travel for work and I just take my family. That's, that's the, the vacations they get, right? <laughs> um, but as soon as I got here, I, I realized I had made a mistake. I should have come here a long time ago. So, so far, we, we love it here. And as far as having my family at Fight Week, I gotta tell you guys, I brought my daughter and my wife, you know, my, uh, last time to, to, to the to Abu Dhabi, long flight, and uh, almost felt like every fighter there was looking at me. Not every fighter, but pretty much a lot of the fighters were looking at me like, "What the heck is this guy doing?" Right? Like he's he's here for maybe to collect a paycheck and go home. But the thing is. I don't know how to explain this to you guys. Fighting was always easy. Fighting was always the first answer. Like, as a kid, I had a problem. Let's fight our way out of it. it you know, it, 
it's not hard to ha- you know, throw me in somewhere and say, go to the death for some reason. That's just the way I'm built. But now nah, tell me to be patient while my kid's screaming. Tell me to be patient with my wife who, <laughs> who, who we can't seem to communicate at times. You know, these things are difficult. These things I have to work harder on. And to, to separate myself from them for one week, two weeks, I'm just, I'm adding to my difficulties. It's a lot easier to just have him here with me. And when the time for the fight comes, I'm going to kill or die either way. So it's not, it's not an issue. Lastly, as a guy who's eventually going to be fighting for a championship, uh, your fight is just before Amanda Nunez. The level of respect that the male fighters have for what she has accomplished in her career as being one of the greatest of, of all time, male or female. Yeah, for uh, we're talking about Amanda. Yeah, oh my gosh. So people, a lot of people have been, you know, telling me you're the main event. You and Charles are the real main event. Blah 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 blah. And I, you know, I have to make sure I pause and let them know. Listen, Amanda Nunez, arguably, arguably the greatest female fighter of all time. You know, um, I don't think I, uh, I don't agree with what they say. Basically, I tell them I, I, I think she, she's there for a reason, and I agree with that decision. And I'm just, I'm, it's a privilege for me to be on the same card as her and, and to be the co-main event of that card. Okay. Uh, what does it do for your confidence to have Javier Cordero, your corner uh, fighter, who's a builder, a pioneer of the truth of box, which is the very jam your opponent's now fighting out? It's, I mean, I don't, I don't really think of it like that. I just think of, man, I have Rafael Cordero as my coach, you know? Yeah, as a father figure. So that's that's really how I look at it. We've spent years together, um, and, and you know he's taught me so much. Those are the things I care about. I don't. It doesn't give me more confidence knowing that he was a former coach there. Uh, it just or or or, or founder, or, you know, part of the foundation, whatever you want to call him, a pioneer there. I just have confidence in what he's taught me. I have confidence in in in, in the work I put in, and I have confidence like this is you know. God will give me this victory. That's what that's what my confidence is. Two more questions. One, two. I'm just com- I'm just curious. Um, what? How do you think Conor McGregor will do against Michael Chandler? So, to be honest with you, I think Chandler stylistically uh, is a good fight for him, especially the Chandler we've seen the last couple of fights. Uh, Reckless doesn't use a lot of wrestling and 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 seems to get tired, right? Uh, I would say stylistically in the top five, I would that's the best fight for him. The 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 issue now becomes, you know, Chandler's been in the heat. He's been in the fights. He's been having these fights, and he's had tough fights, you know, against good guys. So it's not like he's he's just coming off the couch. I I think that's the that's going to be the problem for Connor is fighting someone who's been in that octagon and he hasn't been there in a while. But I think stylistically, Connor's. Connor striking is slick. Uh, you know, whether you like the guy or not, you have to respect his skills. He has very slick uh, uh, striking. His timing is, is definitely a little bit different than everybody else's. And I think his grappling is actually not bad either. He has good grappling. Now, can you put it all together and not get tired and, and you know, find the finish on Chandler? That's that's the question. I'm, I'm still leaning towards uh, Connor, but it's, uh, you know, my... Uh, it, it like kind of wavers every now and then. Okay, and just lost one um, a prediction on the main event. Uh, okay. Let's see. The problem is Aldana's so tough. I don't see her getting finished. So, but I do think Amanda's gonna win. You know what? I'll go with Aldana. I'll just go with an Aldana. We'll uh, we'll go KO Aldana like third round or something. Here, I've been you here. Hey, um, when you're studying Charles, obviously he's very erratic and um, his style is kind of hard to mirror. Um, when you're looking at him, is there one area you can pinpoint where you know that you're better than him? There's many areas. Obviously, like I mentioned before, I think the grappling, I think the wrestling specifically as well. Um, the striking as well. You know, I know, like you said, he's uh, he's got wild striking, but I think the what I do... Um, in my basics, I do better than what he does in, in, in his erratic movements, like like he called it. So, um, there's there's many points that I, I, I see a difference in, and I think I can take advantage of. Thank you. Thanks, man.